Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We begin our worship with announcements. The ladies' breakfast group will meet on Thursday, August 27th at 8.30 a.m. It will be by the picnic tables out back. Please bring a chair and your breakfast and join them. The Crofton Christian Care Council closed closet located at the First Baptist Church in, o in Crofton, is closing. All clothes will be available at the church today, August 23rd, from 10.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. Please pass this information along to those who may need assistance. The church is located at 1690 Crofton Parkway. We continue the Bible class on the book of Galatians today, this morning at 11 o'clock. Please join us in the fellowship hall or by Zoom meeting. The meeting ID is 311-151-0068. The passcode is 8UKVX2. You got this by email. If you wish to join us by phone, please dial 301 715-8592. The meeting ID is 311-151-0068. And the passcode for the phone call is 401351. Again, you have this also by email. So if you don't remember these numbers, please check your emails. During the Holy Communion service time, I will announce again the time to commune so that we will commune at the same time. Please wait until I announce to open the communion packs. For these and more announcements and details, please visit our website at stpaulscrofton.com. That is stpaulscrofton.com.
Faithful God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, deeply grateful for the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown toward us, your people. When we call out to you, you answer. When we are exhausted, you give us the strength to go on. When we find ourselves in trouble, you are there standing beside us. And so we come before you with gratitude and praise offering you the worship of our hearts and lives. Open our eyes to see and know you are here among us. Open our ears to recognize your voice. And then send us out from here to live and work in the world as, you, as your faithful disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Old Testament lesson is found in the 51st chapter of Isaiah, beginning in the first verse. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion, he comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of, of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in a like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is found in the 11th chapter of Romans, beginning in the 33rd verse. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments! How inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, through many, are the one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. The one who teaches, in his teaching. The one who exhorts, in his exhortation. The one who contributes, in generosity. The one who leads, with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy, with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, children, boys and girls watching us from home. I am ready. Are you ready? I got my school backpack. I got my water bottle. I got more stuff. I got my lunch box. And in my lunch box, you know what that could be? I got my fruits. My banana, and I got two snacks. Should be good for my breakfast. I have more. I got my book, this is my Bible, and I got my notebooks and other books. So I'm ready, and I hope you are ready. It's that time of the year, exciting time. Time to go back to school. Maybe you already started last week, or maybe you are going to start soon. It's going to be time to meet new friends. You're going to catch up with old friends. You're going to have lots of fun. You know, school is a place where we grow and change. 
through the knowledge we get from school, we grow and change. We become the future doctors, scientists, and teachers. In the same way, God tells us in his word, in the book of Romans, what we just read this morning, that we grow and change by learning God's word. In Romans chapter 12, we read that God's word changed our mind so that we grow to be God's good children, we change to be the future pastors, the future teachers, and the future singers for the church, worship leaders. Not only that, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8 tells us that God gave us gifts. You know, this sounds like school. Your friends and you, everyone is different. Everyone is good at things. Maybe you are good in math and somebody else is good in science because God gave you different gifts. And we have different gifts in the church. God gave us different gifts to grow and change to become the future pastors, the future teachers, the future worship leaders. And those gifts are available for us because we are baptized children of God. So I encourage you to use the gifts God gave you to use them for school, and to use them to grow, to be good children of God and the future God's people. Please join me in prayer to praise God for his gift of his word and gifts. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your word that changes us and makes us grow to be your good children and your future men and women of God. Thank you for protecting us this summer and bless this school year as we grow and change through the knowledge we get from school and from the Bible. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the, the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maria Dyer was born in 1837 on the mission field in China, where her parents were pioneer missionaries. Both her parents died when she was a little girl, so she has to be sent back to England to grow up in her uncle's house. The loss of her parents at childhood did not discourage her from serving God. When she was 16, she went along with her sister back to China to be a missionary in a school, actually high school. Five years later, she met Hudson Taylor, and she got married to him, who is known till this day for his life of mission, ministry, and faith. She and Hudson Taylor had nine children, of which only four survived until adulthood life. Maria herself died of cholera when she was only 43. But she thought the cause was worthy of the sacrifice. On her grave mark, the inscription reads like this, for her to live was Christ and to die was gain. All of us are not called to be missionaries like Maria. However, we are all called to live a sacrificial life. Last week we talked about God's grace and love, that God gave us his mercy through his unconditional love. God forgave our sins in his mercy through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what's our response to this God? How do you respond to the God who had mercy on us? How do we live once we receive God's mercy and grace? The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, how to respond when we are receiving God's mercy, God's grace, and God's amazing love. God calls us in this text to worship him as a response to his love, as a response to his mercy, as a response to the grace he gave us. He calls us to worship him, to worship him in two ways. Number one, to present our life as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Verses 1 through 3. During the Old Testament time, you remember that God's people used to sacrifice animals as an act of worship. Animals were taken as an atonement for sin offering. And animal sacrifice brought an atonement for our sin, a compensation for our sin before God. This is how it was done. If you read the book of Leviticus and other books, a sinner brought an animal to the tabernacle. The priest makes an atonement on behalf of the sinner. The animal was killed, and the priest sprinkled the blood on the altar and the fat portion of the meat is burned on the altar. Sometimes they burn the whole, the whole animal outside the tabernacle. So you can see lots of blood, lots of killing, lots of smelly stuff. All those blood piling on the altar, all those burned animals for weeks and years and months, for every single sin we knew of and noticed. Animal sacrifice was a moving picture of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Jesus, Jesus Christ sacrificed himself on the cross once for all, for all of our sins. His body and blood that we eat and drink is that sacrifice of the New Testament. We don't have to 
do that messy and bloody sacrifice for every single sin that we notice. Now, Christ has paid it all on the cross. And we have the sacrifice of Christ once for all. And we received it through grace. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul also wrote to the church in Rome that had experienced animal sacrifice, both in the Judaism and also in the Roman pagan culture, animal sacrifice was part of religious devotion. The sacrificial death that Paul has in mind here, talking in Romans chapter 12, is the crucifixion. And the living sacrifice is talking about is related to Christ's resurrection. That's exactly what happened when we were baptized. We died with Christ, and we were resurrected with him. We were risen from the dead with him. We are here before God today, where Paul did not ask either the Romans or us to have more worship service. But he is asking us to live for God's glory in our words and in our acts. When we think of worshiping God, we usually think of worship service. We have our preferences of worship styles, which is fine. We like singing hymns and songs to the Lord. That's great. There is nothing wrong with enjoying and worshiping God in any worship style we are comfortable with. The songs, the reading of the scriptures, the offerings, the communion, the prayers, and the sermon. It's all worship in a corporate form. And God blesses us in those services. This is the problem. We have 168 hours in a week. Worship service is one hour. What about the 167 hours of the week? God calls us to worship him every day, every time, every hour, every minute in our life, in addition to our worship service. He calls us to offer our life as a living sacrifice in our time, in our talent, and also our treasures every day. To present our life as a living sacrifice means we have to offer all our body, our soul, and our mind, our heart. Jesus made it clear when he said all of our self, our being, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 37 through 39, he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, our worship should not only be in the worship service, but also every hour, every minute, every day of the year, the month. That's why we are called to present our life, our whole being, as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So, God calls us to worship him, one, by presenting our life as a living sacrifice. And number two, we worship him by serving him with the gracious gifts he gave us. Verses 3 through 8. God's gracious gifts enable us to serve him as a living experience. God is a good God. When he calls us to sacrifice our life as a living sacrifice, he didn't leave us alone. He didn't put burden on us. 
He gave us spiritual gifts that would enable us to achieve our worship life. Some of the gifts are mentioned in verses uh, 6 through 8 are prophecy, service, teaching, exhortation, generosity, leadership, and mercy. God's gift according to his mercy make our, our life a powerful testimony. God uses us for evangelism, for mission, and discipleship. The apostle himself, Paul, lived an extraordinary missionary life. He lived a sacrificial life. He, he moved from being a persecutor of the church, the one who was persecuted the most. That's why, still after 2,000 years, we talk about the life journey of the Apostle Paul. That's why usually we wish to live the life of those outstanding faith fathers before us. We want to do what the Apostle Paul did, what Mother Teresa did, was what Martin Luther King did, what Billy Graham did, what Maria Dyer did. However, God has given all of us different gifts according to his grace. He calls us to discover our individual gifts and then to use them to serve God as an act of our worship. We are not called to do the minimum in our worship. Or we are not called to do everything by ourselves. We are called to do our share in the body of Christ. That's why God wants us, all members of his body, his family, all of our mem congregation members, to serve him with our gifts and to build his kingdom, his church. Brothers and sisters, you are all called to serve God sacrificially. To enable you to serve him sacrificially, the Lord has given you spiritual gifts and talents to all of you. Some of you are called to be evangelists in your community. Others are called to lead our congregation in the board and ministry teams. Some of you are gifted in singing. Others are invited to play the organ. Some are called to usher. Others are drawn to visit the sick and the homebound. Some of you are called to help the poor. Some of you are urged to operate the sound system and to live stream our service, especially during this difficult time. Some of you are gifted in counseling. And some of you are called to exhort God's children in difficult times. Some of you are gifted in quilting. And others are called to serve in giving. All of those ministries are our living sacrifices to the Lord using the spiritual gifts that God gave us graciously. God gave us the capacity to worship him using our gifts. Dear God's family, with the words of the Apostle Paul, I urge you this morning to use your gifts to worship God every day. This morning, God calls us to respond to his steadfast love and incredible mercy by offering ourselves as a living sacrifice. We present sacrifice that is our Christian life. A living sacrifice that gives a pleasant aroma. Therefore, God's children, go to the world and worship him, worship the Lord, by living a sacrificial life. Amen.
let us confess our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Your prayer points, please. Yes. So my daughter just before she had to evacuate, she was able to pray with her father for me. Oh, okay. Jessica. How do you spell? Sorry? How do you spell the name? Uh, L -A -U -I -S -S. Okay, Louis. Okay, L -A -U -I -S -S. okay. Okay. Yes. My name is Jody. She's from Hospital Heights in Calgary. Jody. 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 J O D I. Jody. G I E. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Prayer points. Jen. Wedding anniversary. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a part for you. Okay. Okay. How do you spell your first name? Orlando. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Okay, Zion. Going back to school. Okay. Okay. Kids going back to school. Mother's prayer. Any other that I didn't see? Sarah, she's sick or? Uh, yeah, healing of the heart. Heart, okay, <laughs> sure. Sarah, you're welcome. Sarah. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Please respond with, Lord, have mercy. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church, and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. 
strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to worship you by presenting our life a living sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord for the faithful proclamation of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord for this congregation, its mission and its people, for the spiritual gifts, talents, time and treasure you gave us to use it for worshiping you. Let us pray to the Lord for all who partake this day of Christ's body, holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord for those who have wandered from the faith and those who have not heard the good news of the gospel, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord for those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and recuperating, especially Jennifer, Louise, Javi, Carol Hampton, Jay Johnson, Pat Clancy, Daniel Snook, Laurie Snook, Bernice Hogg, Cindy Crater, Bob Kendrick, Bob Anderson, Barbara Grace, Phil Meyer, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks. We pray the Lord especially with Charlotte and Orlando, who celebrate their wedding anniversary. Anna, who received the precious gift of baby boy. Heidi Wood, Heidi and Rick Wood, who celebrate Heidi Wood, who celebrates her birthday on August 27. Ella Weber, who celebrates her birthday on August 29. That we bring glory to God, our generous Father. Let us pray to the Lord. That all families see your protection from any harm, danger, and COVID-19, including those who travel to go back to school, especially children of all families. Liam Cook. Spiritual healing for those who are wandering in the world, especially Sarah. To those who serve in the military, especially Dylan Harris, Jake Garbold, Rachel McCombe, Scott McCombe, and Brian Wolford, that they rejoice in your loving kindness and your protection. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sacrificial days of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the end of the earth to celebrate with all the faith, with all the faithful, the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. 
graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, give us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the time for tithes and offerings. Our God, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, gave us our life and all our possessions. We give back to God our tithes and offerings that proclaim the gospel in the world. Amen.
neither days nor life, nor angels nor, ru nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height, nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. We go in the name of the Christ. Getting comfort. Good. Good. Yeah, you're